Comedy Cube. You guys having fun so far? Make some noise. You guys, keep the energy high. This comedian coming up right now is super funny. Please start showing him some love. Make some noise from Nat Bamo. Yes, 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 yes. Heck yeah, one guy. I appreciate all of you. Let me ask you guys something. Are you fuckers ready for some clean Christian comedy? <laughs> couple yes, couple no. Well, it doesn't matter because I'm Jewish as shit. Well, hi, um. <laughs> Hell yeah, thank you five people down with the tribe. Appreciate you. Oh, this is exciting, guys. I hope you all had a very productive pandemic. I did. I know during lockdown, a lot of people put on weight, but I actually lost all faith in America. Anybody else on that diet plan? Oh, that was a lot of weight to drop. Yo, this pandemic has been really rough, but honestly, I think there's one thing that did give me faith in the future of our country. The January 6th storming of the Capitol. Ooh, I enjoyed that. And ooh, you look real nervous right now. Let me explain. I do not support why those people stormed the Capitol. I don't even understand their motivation. They were mad that Donald Trump, a senile alleged rapist with a history of racist remarks and a son who's a corrupt cokehead, was about to be replaced by Joe Biden, a senile alleged rapist <laughs> with a history of racist remarks and a son who's a corrupt crackhead. Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? Like, what were they so mad about? That's like going to a restaurant, ordering a Coke, and the server goes, is Pepsi okay? And they're like, time to burn this shit to the ground, boys. So no, I do not support why they stormed the Capitol, but what I do support is making sure that politicians are afraid of us. Because if this pandemic, if this pandemic has taught us anything, it's that politics is just an acronym, P-O-L-I-T-I-C-S, that stands for people of low integrity temporarily in charge of shit. That is all it is, gang. And they should be afraid of us, because maybe if they were, then during the pandemic, some of those small business loans would have actually gone to small businesses instead of all their corporate donors and the LA fucking Lakers. I say, I say, fuck it, we should storm the Capitol every year. <laughs> Think of it like an annual aggressive job performance evaluation. <laughs> Because if all the politicians in D.C. knew that if we caught them in the pockets of lobbyists, that we'd lob them on a fucking catapult, you'd see a story on CNN tomorrow like, breaking news, the Senate unanimously passed a bill that guarantees health care will be affordable, prostitution will be legal and covered by insurance. <laughs> The national anthem has just been changed to wet ass pussy. <laughs> and am I hearing this way? Right? Chick fil A will finally be open on Sundays, but only for gay people. Back to you, Jim. <laughs> Hell yeah, thank you for clapping at my opener about overthrowing the government. I go hard. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like after a hard joke like that to start, I should lighten the mood a little bit. So let's talk about religion real quick. <laughs> like I said up top, I'm Jewish, which is really cool because it gets you out of certain types of white guilt. Like a while ago, I had a Native American gentleman say, hey, your people stole my land. Here's the thing, my family didn't get to this country until the 1940s, so I thought I had him. I was like, excuse me, sir, I'm Jewish. We had nothing to do with stealing your land. 
Then I found out his house got taken by the bank, and I was like, oh, our bad. <laughs> yeah, that is on me. I apologize, little feather. <laughs> I am Jewish. Uh, my best friend growing up was Catholic, or as I used to call it, wrong. <laughs> Because if you're religious, you think you're right and everybody else is wrong. But I had a real eye-opening experience when I was eight years old, and my friend invited me to go to church with him. And the first thing I saw when I entered this church was a big statue of Jesus crucified on the altar. And I had never seen that before, so I said, whoa, what did he do? And my friend's mom, she thought she was helping. She went, oh, Nat, that's Jesus. He was Jewish too, you know. <laughs> Later on, they were passing out those crackers and wine. She's like, oh, that's that Jew's flesh and blood. I was like, what is this place? <laughs> I saw the holy water. I went, are those Jew tears? Why am I here? I was having an adorable anxiety attack, but then I listened to what the priest had to say. Don't lie, don't steal, don't murder. And I realized, wow, this is the same boring ass shit they say at synagogue every week. <laughs> and even at eight years old, I realized every religion is different, but at their core, they all have the same message. Whether you pray to no one, God, Allah, Buddha, or Beyonce, we need to focus on what brings us all together, that one message we can all get behind. And I think to help, instead of carrying a Bible in every room of a hotel, they should just embroider on every towel, fuck you, be nice. The only message we need in our hearts. <laughs> Very least, Maybe it'll stop me from stealing those motherfuckers every so often. <laughs> but that's the thing, man. When it comes to belief, it doesn't matter what you are. It matters who you are. I have a friend who doesn't believe in evolution. But we're still friends because he doesn't try to force that on me. It weirds me out when people who don't believe in evolution don't want anyone to believe in evolution because I believe in God and I believe in evolution. I think, what if God invented evolution? He might be upset you're not giving him credit for one of his greatest hits. Whoa. By the way, I don't even smoke pot. How did that idea get in here? That is divine touch, and I am a vessel for you right now. That is proof of a creator. Evolution is God's greatest invention, second only to the orgasm. <laughs> Which, by the way, that's another invention you never hear religious people giving him props for. Some religions don't even want you to have orgasms. That doesn't make any sense to me because it would be the easiest way to convert new members. <laughs> Every time a guy comes, there should be a Jehovah's Witness ready to sidle up to them like, did you have a good time tonight, sir? <laughs> well, guess what? God did it for you. <laughs> oh, you don't believe me? Well, why do you think you screamed his name when it happens? <laughs> and then drop a pamphlet and pray they don't just use it to wipe themselves off with afterwards. <laughs> I'm just saying, when I went to church with my friend, that pastor should have been up there going, thank the G-man for the G-spots. Yes, sirree, yes, sirree. Church is only the second best reason to be on your knees on a Sunday. Can I get an amen? And the Lord doth say, oh, skeet, skeet, skeet. Come unto me, John 3:69. Peace of ass be with you all. <laughs> like I said, it doesn't matter what you are; it matters who you are. Best example of this: the Westboro Baptist Church. If you remember them, they're the ones that picket soldiers' funerals because they died for a country that supports gay people, and they think gay people should go to hell. I say, why do you even want to believe that? I like to believe that God loves us all equally. 
and that there's a special section in heaven for gay men where they get awesome blowjobs for all eternity. <laughs> I don't know what y'all pray for in church, but at synagogue, that's what we were doing. <laughs> My eight-year-old friend had a lot of questions when I invited him on over. And listen, I know a lot of people hate the Westboro Baptist Church. They think that God should send them to hell but I don't want to believe that either. I like to think that God knows the best way to fight hate and ignorance is with love and compassion. And I hope he shows them the error of their ways by forgiving them. And I hope that there's a special section in heaven for the Westboro Baptist Church where they get to give awesome blowjobs for all eternity. Amen. All right, before I go, I want to give you guys the option of how this special is going to end. Do you guys want this next bit to be an easy joke or a difficult joke? Call it out. Difficult? All right. When I was three years old, my dad died of cancer. Some of you are like, shit, is it too late to say easy? <laughs> But don't worry, this is gonna be a positive message. Because if losing my dad so young taught me anything, it's that tomorrow is never guaranteed and you have to enjoy today while you know you have it. And I think the best way to enjoy your life is to stop caring so much about everything. People say apathy is bad, I disagree. I think most of the conflict in the world is caused by people who care too much about shit that shouldn't matter. I want to live in a world where someone can say, I am a black, gay, transgender, Muslim, North Korean Republican. <laughs> and the only thing their new roommate says to that is, welcome to the apartment, Shaniqua Zhang Abdullah Bush. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me as long as you're not a fucking Scorpio. <laughs> That's a world that knows peace. I say take a break every now and then for yourself and just go on a don't give a shit sabbatical. Because what happens when you care? You get angry, you get disappointed, you get depressed. You know what happens when I don't care? Nothing. <laughs> and there's nothing better than nothing. You go to work on Monday, your coworker says, oh, what'd you do this weekend? You say nothing, they go, mmm, that sounds incredible. <laughs> you go to dinner with a friend, they pick up the check, you say, oh, how much do I owe ya? What do you want them to say? Nothing. Oh, you're picking up on it now. <laughs> Pop quiz, let's say you go on a date with a girl, she's in a cute little sundress. Or maybe you go on a date with a guy and he's in a pair of hot John Cena jorts. Yum. <laughs> what do you hope they're wearing under those sexy garments? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> and then let's say you hook up with them and then two weeks later go to the clinic to get yourself tested. <laughs> what do you hope the results find, everybody? Nothing is good. Nothing matters. Nothing is worth living for. That's my philosophy. Yes, that's what I tell everyone. That's why I got fired from the suicide hotline. But hey, <laughs> thanks for nothing. And thank you guys for being with me here. Shalom. This has been a Funny Media Group production.